It's the J.R. Hendrick Texan gentleman dealing with the early life of J.R. Hendrick in a narrated format. Enjoy the fun, my friends. Welcome to the podcast with me. Back from his assignment is JR. Hey, howdy, everybody. We've been drinking uh, JR root beer all night. It's early hours of the morning here when we're recording this. We might as well get this done, huh? So let's get down to it. All right, JR, you got to do this first part, okay? Sunday, even though Kristen. And I enjoyed the worship service. We had a hard time finding a good Sunday school class to enjoy together. So, we resolved to go to Sunday worship. Uh, next time only. And then, Carmen would drop her off at her dorm and Stoney would take me to the Holy to the Holy Spirit Club. Daddy came uh, home to Washington D.C., resolving that President Clinton would make an attempt such like this to shut him up again. That he would never let that happen. That being said. He was in a more bipartisan mood. 9 a.m. Eastern. Okay, so Jim's in his office. Uh, his own office in Washington, D.C., the Chevy Chase Uh Along with an intern, he's working on this policy briefing. Um... The Small Business Jobs Protection Act of 1996. Uh, this uh, was a job that Jim was beginning to thoroughly enjoy. 11.50 a.m. Central. J.R. walks out of Smith Hall when he bumps into Mike Fields. Just checking up on you, boy. Hope you're doing all right, Mike Field said. Yes, sir. Better than ever. Going to see Kristen when she gets out of class at two, Gerald said. Don't neglect your studies on her account. You know what your daddy says. For all intents and purposes, Kristen and I have a study date tonight. Okay, so it's 2 p.m. Central. JR um, meets Kristen at Napal. She wants to get away um, from the lecturing palsy. So they agreed to go to the student union to get some Hershey's and some Pepsi. The romantic story, the study date, was born. Okay, 4 p.m. Eastern. Jim gets off from work early. And decides to sit in the mansion front lounge, cuddling with Betsy. Tonight, they would be having dinner with the dating couple, Blake Carter and Carolyn Sears. Heiress of the new, of the now uh, defunct Sears Company. 7 p.m. Central. Texas Tech Library, uh, J.R. and Kristen have been studying uh, hot and heavy for about an hour now, 
when Gail decides suddenly to take a study break and kisses her. She, she giggles. Now that's what I call a study break. He kisses her again and tickles her. You better get back to your studies. You got that contention to the end next week with Dr. Grant. <laughs> that is a cute scene, Jared. A cute scene. So, it's funny. The spring before, Charlie would not let you study. This spring in 96, Kristen insisted that you study. We were quite a pair back in those days. I know, huh? 8 p.m. Eastern. Jim and Betsy entertain Blake Carter and Carolyn Sears. Hell no. What it is. But my life was so drab. And Blake, he completes me, Carolyn said. Well, Jim and I have been married for almost 27 years. And we know each other. For about seven years beforehand. It took us so long for us to find each other. But when we found each other, we had a moment. But we fit hand in glove. You see, that's how I feel about my Care Bear, Blake Carter said. After two divorces, I think I finally found somebody that really gets me. Really measures me. Amanda and Katie. Amanda and Katie, baby. Man. Man, more of me. For all the wrong reasons. Care Bear? She helps me pass the day and the night. Love and kind easy, Jim said. But me and Bet said, perform me and Betsy. You have to perform three kids to really make uh, ourselves known. And soon, settle down for a lovely marriage. Okay, so now it's 11 p.m. Texas Tech Library. JR puts Karen and Kristen in the shuttle and he sees Mike Fields approach. Don't be neglecting your studies. Your daddy asked me to keep an eye on you. Every step of the way, Mike said. Kristen, she ain't like Charlie Nation. She insists that we study and study together, J.R. said, def defending his girlfriend. Okay, Mike Fields? Mike Fields, it's the first time I've had to do this to you. And I should have gave this to you um, during the summer episode, the spring, the, the fall 94 episode when you were acting like a turd. Bell time. Don't do this. I love Uncle Mike. I know, but still.
Okay. Probably the only bail we're going to get. Thank God. Okay, so now it's 7 a.m. Central. Dayar and Ken are having breakfast at Waffle House, a restaurant in the Student Union building. We haven't been able to talk for a while. What's going on in your life? Ken asked. Kristen is taking me to an Amistar meeting tonight at the Sterling Hotel, Kara said. Now, please be careful. If you know how many marketing scams, JR cut him off. I get an earful about this from Kevin, from Kevin McDonald already. Please let me find out for myself. You must really love this girl. I can't see that. I can see that she makes you very happy. At least I can be sure that you're not going after Karen Crowder again. She wants to marry Donald. And if that happens, he's going to take her away from all her family and all her friends out of this area and say goodbye for good. She swears this time she found herself a forever love. Well, I don't care to hear about that. I just care to see that you're happy, JR, Ken said. I wanted to originally give Ken the bell, but I won't. 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Jim is working writing a blurb insert about the policy briefing that was to be released in the Washington Times and the Fort Worth Times. For some strange reason, he's starting to love his job at Washington, D.C. a little more. But we're going to see how this might change pretty quickly. 11 a.m. Central. Jar walks out of Smith Hall. When he gets a call, it's his mother. How's life with your new girl? Betsy asked. We do well, Mama. Like a house on fire, which is good. Your daddy and I feel the same way. We're going to a Republican fundraiser tonight with Walton F. Lipscomb. She wants to show me her side of the business that she's doing. Obviously, she admires me for only two business, two companies. I'm just glad it, glad that your daddy made peace with his job. He says he has less time, less than six months left. So he's going to try to enjoy it. Once again, we'll see if he does. 1.50 p.m. Central. I walked out of my uh, contention paper session. I had turned in my defense uh, brief and the dean of uh, the week ago, and the dean said that most of the briefs were done very well. Thursday, the dean had to go to speak at Yale. He was hoping that we would work on our uh, 
contingents, contingencies of the library. The last session would be on the 30th, and I was informed that my defense would be, would take place on the 8th, with Dr. Harmon presiding. That's got to be, that was a kick in the pants. Because I was hoping to write a book, rather, I can't give them spoiler alert for them. No, we can't. 3 p.m. Eastern. Jim is writing his uh, testimony brief before the House chamber. The whole House chamber about his uh, presentation of faith based resources for small business, a public private partnership that he was um, presenting. Uh, the Congress a third time. Senator Alex Romy had approached Congressman Frank Knott and Mike Blasio to run interference should Bill Hume ask any ridiculous questions. He had received the phone call that morning by White House Chief of Staff, Leon Panetta, that said that he had to appear at Field Later's office at 12.30 the next day to discuss a sensitive matter. 7 p.m. Eastern. Jim and Betsy are at a political uh, fundraising dinner where uh, the keynote speaker is Air Force uh, Colonel Kenneth Bryan Orenthal. Jim took copious notes, but he also noticed on the other side of the room Senator Cordell Wheeler Although the senator had been friendly to Jim recently, many of his uh, friends were suspicious of his friends, uh, his friendliness. Whether he stands with his party or not, how would he betray his party? And go back to Clinton. The previous Sunday night. The previous Sunday night. Chris and I listened to the news together. And we discovered. That there was a poll. Among. Wheeler's home base. Louisiana. That they weren't supporting him anymore because he betrayed the his, uh, his convictions upon whom when he was elected. Seven p.m. Central. An hour later, in Lubbock, I was mesmerized when the third word colonel described how he went from dead broke to two million dollars based on his business with Amistar. My heart connected with it. Just like I did with Chrissy. 11 p.m. Central. J.R. steps aside in the hallway as Kristen conducts business with her uh, sponsor, Delaney. I could tell 
the tension in Kristen's voice. And I wanted to rush in and calm her down. But I realized that Palsy could be there for her. Interesting developments. Interesting developments. Okay, 24. It is um, 6 a.m. Jarrah walks out of the Sibley where he has been swimming since 5 a.m. His plan was to have breakfast with C.B. Coleman and Connie at the Holy Spirit Club. 6.30 a.m. Donuts, bagels, and cinnamon rolls are for breakfast at the Holy Spirit Club. As J.R. sits down with C.B. Coleman and Connie. So, so, how's your dating relationship? Connie asked. We're doing perfect again. I think we may go on a date again tonight, J.R. said. Don't get too ahead of yourself, J.R. I've dated dozens of times. Sometimes it seldom works, C.B. Coleman said. I detect a hint of skepticism in, in your tone, Connie told C.B. Just because I broke it off with Justin again doesn't mean that I can't work with J.R. Okay, so now it's 8 a.m. Eastern in Washington, D.C. Jim is testifying before Congress reintroducing his faith-based uh, resources Public-Private Partnership Act for Small Business. Of course, Bill Hume sounded a few bars asking a couple of questions, but Frank Knott and uh, Mike Blasio took over for the Republicans side defending Jim. Also joining was Congressman Toby McKenzie from Tennessee. Twelve thirty PM at the SBA, Jim walks into Phil's office and they sit down together for a talk. The president called me on his on his plane ride back from Moscow. He's done some thinking. How about we put you only in charge of the Entrepreneurial Affairs Agency? That means you run the Congressional and Media Affairs Office Director. But you'll stay on as a uh, figurehead as director of the Office of Policy Liaison and Planning, Phil said. That's something I prefer if I'm going to have a job here in D.C. It will be something I enjoy, Jim said. Fantastic. The president has been uh, intrigued by your answer. You tell the president the, uh, I open for business today. Hold on, Jim. You still have a couple of weeks 
uh, in your position. And you testify before Congress for the last time as director of policy liaison and planning on the 8th. <sighs> Frick me a wailing, Jim explained, exclaimed. I knew the president had conditions. I won't forget that, Phil. Okay, we see where this is going. Phil, you get the bell. You get the bell. That's that's crazy. Come on now. 1 p.m. The budget meeting at the Small Business Administration was disorganized and hectic. Forcing Jim to redact some of his speech regarding some changes in fiscal policy. 2 p.m. Eastern At the White House, President Clinton is meeting with Dick Morris and SBA career evaluator Leon Drew. Damn it, give me the spin on Hendrick, President Clinton assumed a demanding tone. <sighs> He's doubting you again. So he's going to be appearing on the Blake Carter show, Leon said. Mr. President, we need a bipartisan show of force. If he doubts and, mis and misbehaves a lot, if he, if he doubts and misbehaves, a lot of independence could be a problem uh, with you. Could see a problem with you. He has to go by the rules. Although, I have to say, he's been a little bit more uh, conciliatory and happier. Just give him his due work. Don't let the bureaucrats uh, steer things in a bipartisan way uh, where it obviously is, uh, where there obviously is none, Dick Morris said. Hillary gets wind of this. I'm in trouble. She's already told me. I have to find some way to lay Hendrick off. After all the talk about being calm and hospitable, Leon said, Mr. President, you don't want to give him a sob story. But then again, you don't want to come on, to come across as loud and belligerent, Leon said. If you want to be a leader, be yourself. Hendrick will be squared away with that for the time being. And Henry and Hillary will have to respect you. Big more said. Well, I guess I have no choice, the president said, taking a Cuban cigar, putting it in his mouth and lighting it. 3 p.m. Central. JR gets out early from advocacy lab and gets a voicemail from, uh, from Crying Kristen, who appears to him at the Texas Tech Fountain. I'm sorry, we have to cancel our dinner date. But 
my client no Shelby. JR picks her up from crying on the ground. Darling, Angel, I'm here. Let's catch bus now back to your dorm. 4.30 p.m. Kristen sent, Kristen sent me home. Still sleepy and weepy. When I arrived to the dorm, Carmen met me with the car. Your Uncle Carl requests your, your Uncle Carl requests your presence at dinner. And where's your date? Canceled. Depressed over business, Jared said. Needless to say, Dola and I went and got you the suit that you're going to wear at that rally with Kristen on Saturday. Get in the car. Your Aunt Donna is expecting you. 6 p.m. Eastern. In Washington, D.C., the double date between Jim and Betsy and Blake, Carter, and Carolyn Sears was canceled because Carolyn had the flu and Betsy had a headache. Yet Blake and Jim went ahead and went to the, din- the, the dinner party. So Phil squeezed you out. Constantine Bush said, Bipartisan, my derriere. It's just more power games, Jim said. Even I've come around. Bill Clinton and his uh, bureaucrat friends are playing suck-up with conservative Democrats and Republicans and independents and trying to score points. But then, at the same time, they undercut them. Just like what was done to Jim uh, this afternoon, Blake Carter said. (laughs) Chris Ormsby, the Republican congressman from uh, Colorado, spoke up. And thing is, Dole is weak. As a weak nominee. And I wish that there was a of a better way. Hell, I wouldn't mind seeing Jim run as a Republican. He can't. He can't, Hillary uh, Bush said. His family. Bessie's certainly returning to the ranch. For the summer. And eventually, Jim is going to be tired of of management in Washington, D.C. Of being in events in Washington, D.C. all alone. I have to work for my second cousin. I have to work for my second cousin Joe. I have to expect my second cousin Joe to go to the convention and do a choke vote block of some Texas delegations with one person voting 
for someone like Pat Buchanan. Hell, I wouldn't mind, Kim said. Mrs. Ormsby spoke up. I don't normally talk politics like my husband. But what about your family? What is it about that blocks you from becoming an independent candidate? And Hillary Bush said, He has a 16 year old, and she won't go to Washington, D.C. So his wife wants to keep the family at the ranch. Oh, wait. No, this is, this is Congressman or, uh, Ormsby. He has a 16 year old. And she won't go to Washington, D.C. So, his wife wants to keep the family at the ranch. Texas ranchers and Texas oil fields. That's what keeps us happy, Hillary Bush said. Hillary was born October 4th, 1940. To Hillary and Louise uh, Loftus Bush. Her father was a distant cousin to President George H.W. Bush. Her mother died December 4th, 1948. And went to, she went to live with her grandmother, uh, with her grandmother Delma, Delma Loftus. Her father died in his Fort Worth apartment on August 11th, 1950. Despite the fact that she was being raised in a strict home with abuse by her grandmother and debauchery by her uh, teen aunt. She transferred from her public school in Fort Worth to Alderney Academy in Washington, D.C. in January 1953, graduating in 1958. She went to Southern Methodist University where she met her husband, Constantine Bush. And they married in 1961 with President G.H. Bush taking her down the aisle. 6 p.m. Central. Dinner at the Hendrick household is lasagna. President is J.R., Donna, Carl, and Max. Grandma couldn't make it today. Because her physical therapist wore her out, Aunt Donna said. I'm sorry to hear that. But it's okay. I wanted her to have a chance to meet my girl. But she had a, ha a bad school day and a bad business day. School ain't going so good for me. Today either. Now don't tell me you going back to harping about that cum laude again, Carl said. No, it's just my advocacy uh, leadership professor is on my back about the defense. I have in two weeks. His lectures are annoying. Look at this way, Max said. You'll be graduating in a little over two weeks. And then 
You got the summer. And then mom's cool. Dad, on, my dad and mom are moving to Utah in early June. And I get a good condo near you. My swimming team buddy, uh, Roddy, has agreed to live with me. So, so that we don't have to live in the dorms. 8 p.m. Central. Okay, in our room, bedroom, Christine is talking to her boyfriend, David. I got a call from mom today, Christine said. What's happening, David said. What's happening is in a couple of weeks. She's coming back to the ranch. You can't keep mom away from this ranch. Which means we'll have to behave ourselves this summer. Don't worry. She just wants to be with the rest of the family. With, with your family over the summer. By the fall, she'll be back with her her husband, your daddy. Daddy's such a dork that he would hoard all her time if he could. Does this have anything to do with JR? This dork graduate is graduating. Dork is graduating in two and a half weeks. Let me tell you something. I'll be around, but not that much. Unless he's cruising with his friends. I think he sits around the ranch and mopes. <sighs> Christine called everybody that she had issues with the dork. <laughs> uh, we need to make a dork sound, but I can't decide what. Mm. We don't have any special sound effect. Let's just give her the bell. In fact, let's give her a double bell. Just for calling JR a dork. And her dad, too. So now it's, it's the 25th. It's 1 a.m. Eastern. Jim and Blake arrived at 14 Heritage Gate. Obviously, they're in the Cadillac limousine. And Jim and Blake are... They are absolutely soused. After the dinner party, Jim and Blake had gone to a high-priced bar in Grand Falls, D.C. The bartender called for a limo to take, uh, to take them home. So, as Blake uh, hobbles home quietly... Jim is walking the grounds of the mansion, yelling and cursing, when one of the night servants, Tilly, walks towards him. Mr. Jim, what are you doing all, all yelling in the midnight air? Tilly said. No, Miss Betsy is going to throw a fit. Let's get you back in the house. 5 a.m. Central. JR wakes up. Unable to sleep. So he goes into one of the, the um, computer study rooms at Gordon Hall. Where he begins an early start in preparing notes. For his advocacy defense. 
7 p.m. Central. JR gets his breakfast tray and goes and sits down at the Holy Spirit Club with Stony Rosen. Heather's flying to Yale to do a presentation, Stoney said. Wow. Dean Satie is flying to, uh, uh, New, uh, to, to New Haven to do a presentation. Sometimes I wish it was my advocacy uh, professor, Dr. Harmon. Make him speak at Harvard. Jared said, I know he's up on your side. But how are things with you and Kristen? I don't know. Good. One day, not so good. The next. Ask her to come to the devotional tonight. All right. Afterwards, we have a study date. Eight a.m. Eastern. In his home office, as always, Jim had asked Kelly for one more cup of black coffee. His fifth cup of black coffee. So, you know, because he had a hangover. Jim is. Uh, Assigning a Yale intern, a three-page brief to be sent to Martha Stout, director of the Entrepreneurial Development uh, Department, the FDA, by 3 p.m. on Friday for her manager's meeting that evening. 9.30 a.m. Central. In constitutional law, J.R. Uh, sits and listens the first set of 25 defense uh, papers. Strangely enough, a lot of them want to make amendments to the Constitution to cause her rights to care of the environment. Some dealt with some economic rights under the amendments, but many of the environmental rights uh, papers, Dr. Wild didn't buy as, as, as much. He probably gave them good grades, Jim, uh, uh, Jimmy, but Dr. Wild was a centrist. We're conservative federalists, aren't we, J.R.? We kind of move a little bit more towards the center, but we don't compromise on principle. 1 p.m. Eastern. Okay, Jim decides to take the rest of the day off. As Bessie is having a lunch with Bethany Horowitz. His friend Andy Brad Braddock had arrived to see him so that they can play a game of golf. 3 p.m. Eastern. Kristen and J.R. decide to go study early at the library. About 25 minutes into the studying, he leans over and kisses Kristen. Again, that's the way to make a study break, Kristen said. Anytime I get a chance to study with you, Gerald said. This is kind of one of those aww moments. We both graduate in a couple of weeks. I'm thinking about talking to Marn Bradley at Holly Studios. To see if I can get a contract. I want to stay in love with you. Regardless of what mom thinks. You go girl. I understand. When we fell in love. With that. You were to be. Musician. 
and I was to dabble in politics. 5 p.m. Eastern. Andy Braddock drops off Jim at the 14 Heritage Gate. Betsy had promised him a fried eggplant dinner and an attendance at a devotional at Bethany Assembly of Christ. 7 p.m. Central. JR goes with Christian to a Thursday night devotional at the Holy Spirit Club. And they are greeted warmly by Stoney and Heather. The hymns were beautiful. The sermon was about charity. Christian was almost uh, mesmerized with the service. But afterwards, she told me that she still she wanted to keep going to the Baptist church to honor my grandmother's uh, wishes. All slain gentlemen are Baptists. Well, this slain gentleman become a Latter-day Saint later on. <laughs> yeah, that's far enough to where we don't have to give any spoilers. 9 p.m. Central. Leaving the library, J.R. has taken Christian to a shuttle. When she leaves, Mike Fields approaches her. Study date? Better be, Mike Fields asks. Uncle Mike, let's not play around now. I'm telling you, I want to study hard. Because I'm going to law school this fall. And I'm going to need that skill. Now, Kristen demands that I study. And oftentimes, we study together, J.R. said. Shoot. Well, will this ever change? And cut. All right. I this I forgot this episode is called Babyface Jr.'s Champion Heart. I give this four point eight uh, root beers. And Jr. and Kristen kissing. One thing is, uh, we don't we don't kiss in the mouth. I don't believe in that either, Jr. Another thing is, well, it's worth it, Jr. Four point eight uh, root beers, and Jimmy, me, and you a partnership in ACN. I'm gonna help you tear it apart. Sounds wonderful, Jr. Hope you enjoy listening to the J.R. Hendrick Texan Gentleman. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and become a part of the adventure. This is the James Hendrick Empowerment Net- uh, Network saying until next time, get ready for the rest of the story. It gets more interesting from here. <laughs>